Good afternoon, Wild 10 delegates. It's a real honor and privilege and joy to be here in Salamanca uh, with all of you and with our delegation from California, which numbers, I think, 22 people. Uh, we are here to share the story of how we brought together a tremendous effort that spanned about approximately three years to craft the first tribal marine use regulation that formally recognizes and protects indigenous tribal rights in marine areas outside of reservation and treaty territories. This is the beginning, in our view, of a major victory that will emerge in upcoming years for the environment and for indigenous people's rights. We are here to share the story of the challenges and the successes of what we went through to bring this new regulation about. And we are going to explain the details of all of the nuts and bolts of that in a series that we will be uh, presenting beginning on uh, October 8th. So there are three other speakers after me, and then we're going to be showing you a, a short film. And um, this is really an opportunity for us to express and share and get to know you uh, and, and to really get into the details of what this process was to protect a very large and important area of the marine environment along the entire California coast. This is approximately the distance from Salamanca to Croatia, I believe. It's about 1,700 kilometers in a linear distance. It's, it's a long stretch. So uh, we are honored and privileged to be here and to share our story with you and to inspire similar efforts in other parts of the world. Thank you. So I was reminded I have to introduce the next speaker. Uh, Sean Patty is the chairman of the Hoplum Band of Pomo Indians. He is also the, uh, on a, the board of directors of the Intertribal Sinko Wilderness Council. And Sean is now going to uh, give a, an opening prayer and a song uh, to get us in the right ways here uh, uh, for the rest of the discussion. Thank you, and it's an honor to be here. Thank you, Hawk. Um, like you said, I'll do a, a prayer and a short song. For those of you that can stand, please stand. And I'd just like to mention that it's traditional amongst our people at the end of the prayer and the song to simply say, oh, we don't applaud by hand. So if everybody can say, oh, at the end, um, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Kadie emul, maya makauke, yawala maake chache halada. Yo ke chache hlada, sho ke chache hlada, chula ke chache hlada, bo ka ke chache hlada. Ya kama baya el yal uda daadu, ya kama el el yatana dem, menene bedo och. Ya hui ya kama e, her hintil ke manem, hintil ke chanon. Ya hui ya kama e, for hintil maa. Ya hui shamesha lowem, kash tono, toko hai. Yahui, Yahui. Men in a bet your better oach. To go now, culture, but a put together capetam and chie. Yahui, oh. Oh. He yum, he used the me yum. He yum, he used the me yum. He yum. Our next speaker is Brianne Fraley. 
She is the self-governance uh, director for the Smith River Rancheria of the Talawa Indian Tribe on the California-Oregon border. Dalaha, Shushi, Brianna and Fraley. Um, I come from Northern California, and um, I'm very honored and privileged to be able to travel this distance to represent my people. Um, I get to do it on a daily basis, and it's something that I went to school for and didn't know that I'd grow up doing. And so what I'm about to talk about will come from my heart and spirit. I had a speech prepared, and the wonderful April Buxbaum helped me, um, coach me through this process. But I feel that it's necessary for me to hope to inspire um, subtle, subtle change, as her husband Glenn speaks of, um, by having compassion and love in what I say. And those are words that I recently learned from my new friends. So thank you for that. Um, you know, some of the things that this group that I'm talking to, why am I coming here to talk to a group that all pretty much shares the same values of the love for environment and wanting to see a wilder place? Because we all agree on that. I think that there's a big piece that's missing, and it's the society and the structure. And where is this group connecting with the governments and the schools and how you raise your family? Where is that component? We need to think about that. Um, Ada Stevenson, who is a Caddo tribal member and an advocate for tribal rights in Northern California, um, gave me this inspiration to our youth. It's our youth that is going to change. We might not see it in our next 20 years that we have of a career here, but if we can get into the preschools, teach our mothers and our fathers how to instill this change, then the world can be a wilder place. So let's think about those preschoolers. I have a three-year-old son, and he's the love of my life, and I have an opportunity to make change in my house, and so do all of you. So I really want you guys to come and listen to what we have to say on October 8th, um, 9th and 10th. Um, there'll be more heart-filled um, words that will be shared at that time. And I really thank you very much. Shu'at Shininla. Our final speaker is Caitlin Gaffney. Caitlin is formerly of the Ocean Conservancy, and she is an attorney with the Resources Legacy Law Group in Sacramento, California. Buenos dias. On behalf of the whole California Ocean Wilderness Delegation, I want to share with you how happy we are to be here, how much we look forward to learning from all of you, and to, sharing our, to share our story of California's 13-year journey to create ocean parks and wilderness along our 17,000-kilometer shoreline. The end result was completed just last year, and over the next week, we'll be providing the details of that experience. We invite you to join us to hear firsthand from 11 members of our delegation, leaders and experts from state and tribal government, from the fishing community, the conservation community, and from the scientific community. First, on the morning of October 8th, California's top environmental official, the Secretary of Natural Resources, John Laird, will be presenting a keynote to open um, the science symposium. Uh, Secretary Laird was also a um, foreign exchange student here in Spain many, many years ago, and I know he's really looking forward to coming back. Next, on October 9th and 10th, we will have a series of three panels, as you've heard, where we'll be able to delve into the details of our campaign for ocean wilderness in California, the critical role of Native American leadership in this process, and the lessons we've learned in the five years since we established our first marine protected areas under this effort. I also want to draw your attention to our booth downstairs in the expo area, where you'll have a chance to meet with, talk with us over the course of the next week. And finally, I want to take you on a journey, a short journey to explore our ocean wilderness through film. Stewards of the Wild Sea is a story about what is going right in California. For wilderness, for indigenous people's rights, for marine protection, 
for us, for our children, and for theirs. Enjoy. off another from the headwaters through the estuary into the ocean. Tribal rights is, is, a, is a big concept. It's not just, well, I can go out there and I can take however many fish I want. That's not what it is. The minute I became secretary, this dropped in my lap on the very first day. We knew the fight was not going to be easy. And certainly it took its toll. Regardless of what the, the outcome of the process was going to be that people were not going to stop harvesting. People were not going to, you know, stop being who they were. We shook things up in Northern California, and it's a very different place. It's the wilderness. Both tribal rights and the environment are protected in ways that they have not been protected or recognized anywhere else uh, before. We've been yeah, I've seen you for a long time. I've started fishing since I was a little kid. And we have our dances and, you know, celebrations, but there's nothing like getting up into the mountain spirit and the tree spirit and the animal spirit and the water. And we started Indian dancing here when we were little. It's amazing to be able to, you know, you're dancing where all these natives were still in touch, still raw, but it was bringing us home. You know, it really was. It brought us home. We got to dance. We got to fish, surf, fish, gather seaweed. It was it's probably life changing for me. The foods that we gather from the coast, you know, whether it be you know shell food, fish, plants, seaweed, kelp, um, they sustained us for hundreds, thousands of years. My grandmother and grandfather used to bring me up and down to the beaches. We'd come over and we'd gather and catch fish and gather and collect food for the winter time. We knew about the fish, what to eat, what not to eat, when to eat, what time of the year to eat it, and what time when not to touch it. Well, there's a right way of doing things and a wrong way. You know, you take with the please and you get back with the thank you. Everything that we do, has a prayer or a ritual around it for the take of our food. We just don't go out there and take it. We ask for it first. California has adopted through regulation the first tribally focused marine use areas in the United States. The Marine Life Protection Act was part of a visionary process. The fish populations were crashing off the coast. The legislature decided there needs to be a process to bring them back. The law aims to proactively protect a full range of habitats and keep food webs thriving. There were so many stakeholders involved in the oceans. Uh, there's commercial fishermen, recreational fishermen, uh, you have government agencies, you have the tribes. The initiative was passed in 1999 without a thought of tribal sovereignty. The regional stakeholder group completely supported the tribal communities and the tribes' uh, perspective that they have an indigenous right and they were good first and they are absolutely the best um, caretakers and stewards. And so that was a big turning point when we realized that we had allies and that the stakeholders and the Blue Ribbon Task Force, both those bodies were supportive of tribal rights. I heard a narrative that was impossible to resist, which was basically, we've been fishing sustainably for thousands of years, you guys show up, and then suddenly you tell us we can't fish in places. Well, how can you resist that argument? There's such an intellectual honesty to it. I think the passion for the oceans really was the common denominator. Frankly, it was a, it was a feeling of great elation and relief for us that we actually had on the books then this regulation for the first time ever that we had worked so hard for three years to achieve 
and that 22 federally recognized tribes are listed in that regulation. The law, the law now reads tribal tech. So we're in the regulations, in the law. That's a big step. This is the story of what they right. We can work together to protect tribal people's traditional rights and our precious ocean environment. It's a source of life for all peoples on this planet. Here is a strong spirit, the creator of life, of all the animals, the trees, everything like that. It's amazing to hear the ocean. More often you get to hear the ocean, see the trees, and hear the leaves, and at the same time hear our kids play. No, it don't get better than that. All are connected. All are part of the sacredness of wild nature. The future of life on this planet depends on our commitment to protecting and caring for the last remaining wild places.